Yeah, I don't listen to this kind of music, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. In this kind of event, you don't shout to do comedy, you know? I don't shout no more. Yeah, you know? Um, yeah, because I was, I was born in the States originally. Why are you laughing? Edo State. Is Edo State not a state? Is it a country? You know, I was born in this state, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? What are you saying? <laughs> we died here. Are you guys having a good time? Right, I'm going to tell you some quick story about when I came to this country. Uh, the first uh, obstacle that I had to face was spoken English. I thought as we speak English, where we come from, until I came here. I found out that you people speak all kind of English. Now, in Africa, when you're talking to an elder, you are not supposed to look at an elder face to face, right? It's a sign of disrespect. So I came into this country with that Africanism, that Nigerianism in me, that when you look at an elder, you are disrespectful. So ladies and gentlemen, I better meet chair. This was my first interview. Somebody, life will be delivered from this joke in Jesus' name. Right. I came looking for a job. And this is me, fresh from Nigeria. And I sat on my interview table. A white man asking me, Mr. Ahigwe, tell us the reason why I should hire you. This is me, fresh from Niger. I said, you should hire me because I'm very confident in myself. I can do all things through Christ. Even I will say in Jesus' name. Amen. And I saw this white man wrote on my resume, extremely timid. I said, me, ouchie boy, that we eat snake while they're still alive. Me, timid. You guys will hear from me. You know Nigerians now. People of God, I didn't sleep. I was applying for job left and right. Chase Bank made a mistake to call me for interview. And before then, I asked my American friend, I am overqualified for this job. I have a, I have a a, 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 you know, BSc in accounting. I have a master's in finance. Why did I not get this job? So this, my American friend, asked me, when you were talking to this white guy, did you look at his face? Did you, did you look at him? I said, no. In Africa, when you're talking to a senior person, you look down. Say, man, PC, you're foolish, man. You're never going to get a job in this country. I said, eh? So how do you get a job? He told me that here in America, you shine your eye very well. I said, how? He said, you show, you show sign of confidence. I said, eh? Hey. So that's how it works here. So you shine your eye. No problem. When they come in for the interview, people of God, from the parking lot. Yes. Secret man say, well, I say, my friend, I cannot see you right now. I'm here for the interview. Not to shine. I will shine. We die here. I go to the office. The white man said, are you all right? I said, I'm okay. Are you sure you need coffee? I said, I don't need coffee. I'm here for the interview. I was not even looking at the man. My eyes were all over the like wind. Like, yeah. And I sat down, said, Mr. Higbe, tell us the reason why I should... My eye never come down. I said, you hire me because I can see tomorrow. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, I got the job. So wherever you come from, when you get to this country, do what? Shine your eye well, well. Now, that went very well. I got the job quite all right. You Americans are very dangerous people. I was sitting in my office on my own at about 12 p.m., one of the Atuno American girl, Lakeisha. You know, they always have funny. Lakeisha, Shani, Kwa, 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 Nini, Nini. I don't know what the meaning. I asked her, what's, your, what's the meaning of your name? I don't know. <laughs> what kind of name is that? I was sitting in my office on my own doing my job. And I saw one of the girls. She walked over and said, ah, PC. I said, yes. Um, we're going for lunch. Do you care for anything? I said, eh? In this country. So they just come and meet you and ask you, do you care for anything? I said, they're very nice people here. So you're so you going for lunch. So you're asking me, do you care for anything? I said, my sister, yes, I do. Um, so where exactly are you going? So I'm going to go through KFC and uh, I want to buy some food. That's okay. Uh, where? For my mind. I said, Ninja boy, you ask me. I said, well, when you are coming, please buy me a bucket of KFC. Big bottle of Coke. And two uh, cake. He said, all right, okay, I'm going to get it for you. I said, yeah? There are nice people in this office, though. <laughs> About 45 minutes after, the, the lady actually came with a big bag, a big basket of chicken, just the way I like it, with a leg that said carrot, and big bottle of Coke, and two cake. And they put it on top of my 
table in the office with one small white paper, a.k.a. receipt. <laughs> and she said, hey, PC, um, that's the receipt. I said, ah, I was sitting in my office. <laughs> you came up to me. You asked me what I want. I told you. Why are you bringing a receipt? He said, no, no, here in the America, we just ask you because we just wanted to help you. But I said, madam, I was in my office, sitting down doing my job. This is $45 we're talking about here. They have never paid me my salary. I did not ask you. Tears don't gather from my eye. He said, PC, I don't mind. I can take credit card. I said, no, madam, you're talking credit card. I was just sitting in my office. You're walking back. You ask me, PC, what can I get for you? And where I come from, when you ask, we tell you what we want. I pay with credit card, though. So since then, whenever they're going on lunch, <laughs> one of them, Shaniqua, we tell Lakisha, say, oh, why don't you ask PC? What, is, <laughs> what does he want? I say, hey, PC is foolish, man. No? <laughs> the last time he gave me attitude. I said, we should have an attitude for this matter. I did not ask you. You asked me, your father. <laughs> so, please don't ask me anything. No, I don't want. So since then, I started bringing my small jello rice <laughs> as lunch. <laughs> One day, I got so angry. I was so I was so angry with all, all of them in the office. My wife cook vegetable soup and put uba. You know those, those soup that has uba. Some padded yam. During lunch time, I went to the break room. Put ve the vegetable in the microwave. The whole of the back was on fire. I said, oh my God, what is smelling? I said, I'm going to die here. Can I have, I have air fresh there everywhere? Pss, pss. I was there. Everybody left the break room. I was the only person in the break room. Ed washed my hand. Sat down. And I said, what do you care for? I said, don't ask me again. You're asking for trouble again now. You know. So it was, it was very interesting. And I've realized that, you know, in this country, um, you guys have different names from what we know in Nigeria, you know. Uh, uh, like when I came, one of my American friends asked, tells me, PC, I like your pint. I said, the blood of Jesus. <laughs> you know, in Africa, pint is the inner <laughs> material that covers the special department <laughs> for the ministerial activities. Hallelujah. <laughs> and I said, my brother, which pint are you talking about? He said, I said, I see, which? You've been winch? How did you see my pint? And I said, no, not that. I'm talking about this. I said, oh, in Nigeria, what do we call this? Uh, and I realized that here in America, we call it pen. In Nigeria, what do we call it? No, pen, pen, pen. In Nigeria, what do we call it? Biro. Even a few days ago, I went to Walmart. I said, do you have Biro? She said, what did you say? I said, you go say tire. Here in America, we call it restroom. In Nigeria, what do we call it? Who said lottery? Were you born in 1945? Somebody just said lottery. You may have gone to Oxford University, London. La tray. <laughs> here in America, we call it, if you go to a restaurant and you eat some food, you want to take some food home, we call it to go. In Nigeria, what do we call it? No wonder they've taken all our money away from the country. EFCC is on there right now. Here in America, we call it SUV. In Nigeria, what do we call it? Every SUV in Nigeria is a Jeep. Or I came to this country. Here in America, we call it, uh, if your nose is disturbing you, like allergy or sinuses. In Nigeria, what do we call it? We say kata. It's kata. There's no phone network of saying kata is kata. Now, here in America, we call it weed, a.k.a. marijuana. In Nigeria, what do we call it? Pastor, how did you know the name? <laughs> you know, it, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. You know. I, I mean, if I remember way back in the days when we were still in Nigeria, before you travel abroad, around that Christmas period, around 15, 20th, our brothers normally come back from home and they keep harassing you. I just came back. I just came back. You that have not traveled, you begin to feel bad. I just came back. My cousin, Efosa, around that November 15, he disappeared. We didn't know where he went to. We knew we didn't see him again. So around that 15, 18th, 20th of December, he reappeared. This time around, the trouser was on the bomb, -bom, you know, sagging, you know. Just came back, man. You know what I'm saying? What are you saying? I just came back, man. I said, my brother, where are you? He said, I just came. Where did you come from? You know, man, I just came back. Where did you come from? I will slap you. Tell me where you come from. Man, I just came out from Kotonou, you know what I'm saying? I said, Kotonou, Kotonou. You know? And now we're here in this country and the ministry moving. I, uh, the last time I came here, I, 
I, I was still living in a rented apartment. Pastor, the ministry has moved now from a rented apartment to the permanent site. Hallelujah. There's a zip code now on my address. Hallelujah. In my neighborhood, you see some white people running, jogging in the morning. I don't have a dog, but I have a small goat. In the morning, I hold the goat. <laughs> you know, in the evening, we kill the goats, and we used to do pepper soup. You know what I'm saying? Now, nah, because this, this is not my show, uh, I'm going to probably put up a show one time where I can have a long, you know, a long period to do my thing. But we're all here to support the king, the one who created this platform for all of us to be able to do, make funny money. I call it funny money. All right, so I'm just going to round up with this. Now, how many of us here all fly on the airplane? We all do, right? Way back in Africa, you remember when you take a transport from, let's say, Lagos to Abuja, somebody always volunteer and say, let us pray. Way back, right? And they pray, they soak the vehicle with the blood of Jesus. At times, the vehicle breaks down because of too much blood, you know, <laughs> in the engine, right? Exactly. But have you ever heard anybody, Pastor Promise, say, Let us pray in the plane? Have you ever preached in the plane before? Except quietly to somebody beside you. Say, My brother, give your life, give your life. If you don't give, you know, we are going up there. Anything can help, give your life. But nobody has ever had the gut to say, Let us pray. So one day I was flying to Toronto. The grace of God came upon me. I was angry in the spirit. And I told them, today you must pray. As soon as they done the announcement, the plane was already moving. Something came into me. I don't know what it was. Let me not lie. I just screamed on top of my voice, let us pray. When I said it, even me, I panicked. I was only black man on that plane. The hair was test. We were like, no, excuse me, sir. Can you? I said, no. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. We have to pray right now. He said, sir, can you please? I said, no. If you don't pray, this plane will crash. When I said that, tears gathered in my eyes. And I heard on the public address system, ladies and gentlemen, because of the threat we have just received. I said, which threat now? I regret to announce to you that this flight to Toronto has been canceled. That time I was still happy. Then the, the man continued, we may have to invite over the law enforcement agency. It did not sink. Law enforcement. Eh, now, police be that <laughs> My brother, there's a difference between police and Olokpa. Olokpa, 1,000 naira can sort it, but you see police, they don't hear a beggar. They tell you, I'm afraid, and you are going. I said, well, that's fine. Arrest me. Put it on CNN. The first Christian comedian arrested for praying. At least, I will have a free publicity all over the world. So I saw two Houston police. They came into the flight quite all right with their mightiness, with guns all over their body. And they came and I said, where is the guy who said this plane is going to crash? I said, sir, it is me. I want to fight for Jesus. He died for me. All right? Arrest me. They actually brought the handcuffs. They put it in my hand. They walked me out of the car. They opened the door for me. You know, they always help you. You know? I said, they, I said they like you. You know, Sir, watch your head, please. Okay? Watch your head. You enter. As we were about to close the door, I woke up. I was in a dream. God bless you guys. I'll see you guys again. <laughs>